What's up, everybody, and welcome to this episode of our athlete interview series presented by USANA. I'm your host, Jason Nacy. For today's episode, I had the privilege of chatting with Chad Beebe, a wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Enjoy the interview. Dude, how's it going, man? It's going well. It's going really well. Um, obviously, wish I was healthy completely, but outside of that, I mean, I can't complain. So I'll just, yeah. Yeah, that's that that that's a bummer, man. I uh, but yeah. it sounds like things are going going good as far as recovery. Yeah, I mean things are honestly because I so I did the same injury on my right ankle actually a few years ago, and I feel like I'm healing a lot faster this time than I did the first time. So that's always big, you know. Um, but I actually start actual therapy today. So for me to okay. say that before even starting therapy is it's saying a lot, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And you're moving? Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. moving to to Charlotte. So yeah. I'll be able to come watch you play. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Charlotte is um I mean I was young when we lived there, but we visited back, you know, a few times and it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, didn't Love you Charlotte. didn't your dad play in uh, yeah Charlotte he played for, for uh the panthers for it was just a year but enough to you know for them to get some friends and yeah so we visited down there a few times but anyway nice nice well first off i want to say thanks for taking the time um i know you're busy with the little one at home and you got a lot going on so i really appreciate you taking the time this is actually cool because I'm pretty sure you're the first athlete that I've done as part of this series that's not part of an Olympic sport. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, and, I'm not as cool as them, so, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> no, I, it, it was interesting because I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking about it last night. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I know I've never had a, an NFL guy on before, but, uh, and then I started thinking, I was like, yeah, I don't think I've had anybody outside of an Olympic sport. So there you go. <laughs> that was the first fun. for everything. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I can add a twist. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I want to I want to jump right in and go a direction I've never gone before, because this is something that I don't know, it, it made a huge impact in my life. Um, and we've talked a little bit about it back and forth on, on, on social media. But when I had my, my first kid, like that was a crazy experience. So, you know, whenever I, my friends who don't have kids that are about to, to um, have one, I just, I love talking about it because it's just this experience, at least for me, it was an experience that I never had before. Like I always tell people, you know, you, you think that you love your spouse and you do for sure, a hundred percent. But mm -hmm. for me, I didn't realize there was this whole different kind of feeling and love once you have that, that first <laughs> kid and you just, you're recently a new dad. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, you hit it on the head when you said it's just a different kind of love. It's really hard to explain um, because I feel like I had heard that before having a child of my own. Um, and again, like you said, you obviously love your spouse with all of you. Um, but it, it, it's just a different kind of love, you know? Um, and I remember talking with my wife before we had our baby girl and it was just one of those things where we just, we wanted to see her, you know, we just wanted to see her, uh, for nine months. I mean, obviously I didn't have to carry her, um, you know, all the credit goes to my wife, but, um, for nine months, just curious, you know, to just see hold this baby girl and look at her and it's so funny because <laughs> you just watch your baby you know especially I mean I don't know we only have one right so our yeah. first um we just lay there and, and look at her you know and she's literally all she does is eat sleep poop right like that's what babies do but you just are so it's just so intriguing and your love just overflows you know um but I don't know it's really hard to explain it's a, it's quite the experience, uh, but we are so blessed and so thankful and, you know, thankful that she's healthy too, which is always a, yeah. a 
a, a plus, obviously. <laughs> yeah. How's your, how's your wife doing? You know, she's actually doing really well. Uh, she just had her six week appointment, uh, not too long ago. So she got the green light to start working out a little bit. She was very active yeah. beforehand, you know, so that was kind of a, a kick in the butt a little bit. Cause she had been wanting to do something like that for a while now, but, uh, so she's slowly starting to get into it and, uh, she is very healthy and doing really good. Uh, so another thing to be thankful for, but, uh, yeah, we're great. We're doing well. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, yeah, we're loving it. <laughs> we're loving it. So one thing I really like to talk about with, with athletes doing this is, um, you know, if, if they've ever had a, a time when they wanted to quit and I know your journey into the NFL was not easy and, uh, and, and I'm assuming, you know, there was probably a lot of times where it maybe you contemplated, is, is this is this worth it? Can you can you take us through your journey um, getting to the NFL? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I hate to say that injuries have kind of been my story. Uh, I think it's part of the story, but I like to really focus on the overcoming and, and the fact that I've been able to come back, you know, thank the Lord each time uh, feeling better than I was before, which is kind of crazy. Um, but just to kind of put it in perspective, last year, um, which was my third year in the NFL, was my first completely healthy season that I had had in 10 years. So this started back in high school um, where I just accumulated these injuries, you know, uh, and it, it's over 20. And I'm not even counting soft tissue injuries, you know, uh, which I've only had a few of those. but they've all kind of been freak accidents, you know, whether it's like a, a torn knee, broken bone, you know, um, you know, multiple times. I mean, my collarbones I've broken three times. It's like, oh, so it's not just once, but I go back to the same spot. <laughs> and, uh, th so there has been multiple times where I'm like, is this even worth it? You know, but I think the biggest moment that comes to mind was before my true senior year of college, I tore my knee up really bad. Um, now thankfully I was able to use a red shirt you know, if I even wanted to continue to play, you know, and these are all the thoughts I was having, you know, is this, is this something I, I still want to do? You know, I've had so many injuries up to this point. Do I really want to go through this whole rehab process again? And, um, uh, yeah, but no, I tore it up pretty bad. You know, I, tore, I did my LCL, MCL, and then my hamstring tendon, which I'm not really sure the scientific yeah. word for it, but the, it, you know, popped off the tibia, so then anchor that back in. And, oh. Um, it was pretty, uh, gruesome, but I, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm a man of faith and I just felt led to continue to play. You know, I, I really did. And, uh, that passion never left me. And as hard as it was to go through that therapy process again, um, I just felt the calling to do so. And, and, you know, looking back on my life now, I'm glad I did. Right. Because the opportunity to play in the NFL obviously never would have happened if I would have quit at that point. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of been my mindset, you know, just try to overcome, persevere. Um, it's kind of a correlation to life too, right? I mean, life is, nobody was promised an easy life, you know, things are going to happen. Um, and that's okay. You know, just get yourself back up and, you know, dust yourself off and then keep pushing through. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so there have been times, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Especially because it's a sport, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm crazy, but hey. <laughs> so what was it that that made you persevere? Was it was it the goal of, hey, I want to be in the NFL? Or did you just feel like you needed to keep going? Was, was yeah. there was there a particular thing that, that that drove you? Yeah, no, I mean I obviously the goal of playing the NFL, shoot, I had that since I was <laughs> since I put on pads. So <laughs> seven or eight years old, you know, I'm mean, just like, Oh man, dreaming in the backyard, laying in the grass, you know, it's like, what do I want to be when I grew up? I want to play in the NFL. Um, and, uh, yeah. So for me, that had always been the goal. Um, so it was a correlation between that and what I kind of already touched on is just the faith aspect of it. You know, I, I do, I, I feel called to play the game. Um, and until I feel called otherwise, you know, I'm going to continue to push through and uh, persevere. Yeah. Um, but 
but no, I mean, there's the goal is definitely to play in the NFL and uh, um, yeah, the combination between the two is kind of the, the thing that drives me. Yeah. So yeah. what was that like? I mean, your dad played in the NFL as well for several years. Um, and then he play he played in several Super Bowls, right? Was it six? Super yeah, he had the record actually for most appearances in Super Bowl until um, Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of shattered that record. I think he's won six. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so what was that like growing up with, with with a dad? Did that make things a little easier for you? Was it harder because I, I would assume people would put more expectations on you because of your your dad's accomplishments with which I've never thought was fair, but you know it, it happens. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I've gotten this question before, and it's interesting. Um, and it's kind of both, you know, because um, there was definitely some expectations, and they were just natural, like it just happens that way, you know, mm -hmm. and that was okay honestly in my mind um definitely some pressure i think i felt it the most in high school uh but it never really bothered me and the, the reason i say that is because my dad you know such a good man my parents are awesome truly um so thankful but um my dad never felt like I, he never made me feel like i had to play you know which was huge yeah. for me uh it actually got to the point where he wouldn't even talk about football or talk about his past with football ever like never which kind of drove me nuts but i i, I understood you know, or i understand now and now that yeah. i'm older you know um so i would always have to ask him a question or like try to pull it out of him to have a conversation about it uh but it was all in the trying of you know not trying to make me feel like i had to play and uh he would have supported me no matter what i chose to do there's no doubt about it um which was big for me, especially in high school, you know, because it made me feel like I could still go to him and have a conversation, yep. you know, as a, as a father and a son, as opposed to me feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm not in the same league. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't compete with this, you know? And I think if that was the case, if I felt that way, I would have quit football a long time ago because I, it was, it would have been too much, you know? Um, but no, yeah, it was, you know, the blessing of him not making me feel like I had to play was was a lot bigger than I even realized as a young kid. Um, so for all that, I'm, yeah. That's awesome. I'm blessed. Yeah. Um, so I want to bring something up that uh, that eh, you, you might not want to talk about too much. Um, that is yeah. the... Uh, the, the punt incident that you had on the 14 yard line with under two minutes left to play. Uh, you were playing the Panthers. I don't know if you yeah. were playing in Carolina or in this was actually a home game. Last okay, year, a home yeah. game. Yep. So yep. The, the only reason why I bring that up is because that was probably a horrible feeling um, to, <laughs> to make a mistake like that. Right. And, yep. but what I think is really cool is you didn't let that affect you. So let's talk about what was going through your mind after that. So um, for the people watching, they call it a muff punt return, right? So yep. Carolina gets it on the 14-yard line, which sets them up for a field goal, which puts them up, right, with yep. less than two minutes to go, and uh, which <clears throat> is a hard task after that to, to, to come back. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when you went off the field, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind? I mean, all the terrible thoughts <laughs> that you can imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, punt return, man. It's. Yeah. And, and, I mean, and, there's a, it's not an easy thing. There's a lot of pressure back there, 100 percent. And but at the end of the day, I'm not making any excuse because that's my yeah. job. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm called to do. That's what I'm paid to do. So you go do it. Um, and it was a routine catch. It was actually a really easy catch. Um, he didn't put the ball up too high. So there was a moment of relaxation on there. And then that's what happens. You know, when you take your focus off just, you know, just for a sliver of time, it's not a good situation. Um, and that's so that ends up happening. And right away, I'm just like, uh, I try to dive on the ball, right? I try to take it from him and 
try to make a bad thing right right away and i'm just laying on the turf like i don't want to get up right now (laughs) (laughs) i just want to stay down here um but yeah i'm I'm thinking man i I just lost the game you know we don't have enough time left i'm giving the ball back to them i think this was inside the 10 yard line or right at the 10 yard line right so they're well within range to at least kick a field goal if not score a touchdown you know yeah and last thing I want to do is go to the sidelines. So I started jogging the sidelines and, and Zim, Coach Zimmer is looking at me. <laughs> I, I know he's not happy, obviously, right? No coach would be happy. Um, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of encouragement too from a lot, you know, mostly my teammates, um, you know, telling me to keep my head up. Uh, obviously, nobody does that stuff on purpose, right? Yeah. Nobody's perfect and things like that are going to happen sometimes. But uh, so that definitely helped. You know, the encouragement helped. Um, but it after about, you know, a minute of feeling sorry for myself, I was like, this is ridiculous. This is not who I am. You know, I'm not going to continue to feel sorry for myself because at the end of the day, um, it's the game isn't technically over after I actually sat down and thought about it, you know. And then our defense did such a great job of stopping them, just holding them to a field goal, right? Uh So we were losing, yes, but we also got the ball back with some time left to make a drive, you know, and um, not a lot of time, though, right? No, there wasn't a lot. I want to say like a minute 20. Yeah. Minute 30 at the most. Um, I'd have to go back and look. But uh, yeah, so I'm jogging back onto the field, you know, with the offense. Uh, We're trying to make something happen uh, with you know, like we said, a minute 20 or a minute 30 left. And I'm like, let's go, you know, buckle it down. We got it. We got an opportunity here. And, uh, uh, you know, thank the Lord's got, had a few opportunities. Um, I, I think I ended up having actually a, a few catches. Um, you know, we're driving down Kirk, you know, love our QB Kirk cousins. He's awesome. Great dude too. And, uh, you know, just peppering, peppering us down the field and uh, we get down to I believe like the 10 or 11 yard line and he found me in the back of the end zone and I was able to make a a play you know so it it was a complete 180 yeah (laughs) and it's funny because it correlates to my life you know it's like oh he's down (laughs) oh now he's up oh now he's down oh now he's up you know it's just like this roller coaster and that's kind of how it was in a matter of you know three or four minutes at the end of the game there um and uh, I was just really happy to be able to have an opportunity at the end there to to make it right, you know, because uh, I felt bad. You know, you feel like you let your teammates down. It's it's one of the ultimate team sports. I mean, in my opinion, it's the ultimate yeah, team sports. Yeah. You know, you got 11 guys and each guy has to do their one specific job to make the whole thing work and yeah. cohesive. You know, it looks like chaos on the field, but there's a lot of little details that are happening at the same time um, and fast, too. But uh yeah, you never want to let them down, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I was just happy to make something right out of it. So you end up winning the game. Yeah, we ended up winning the game. Um, so I think there was only like 20 seconds left at that point. Uh, so Caroline did get the ball back, and it did get a little nerve wracking because <laughs> I think they did make one big play, but then it was over. So it was all good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do you think that? So were were the play calls? Um, directed towards you or did you just get open? Cause you said you had a few, a few catches on that drive before the actual mm-hmm. touchdown. Um, were, were they, were the play call specifically for you or did you just end up with the ball? Uh, that's actually a really good question because I, I think, okay. So I'm pretty sure if I'm re- remembering correctly, I had three catches and the last one was a touchdown. So the, the other two, um, I wasn't, they call it like a first read, a second read, and third read progression for a quarterback. Um, and I definitely wasn't the first read on those first two catches, but I was definitely a viable option. Yep. But the funny part is on the last play, the one I scored is I was a last option. I was actually kind of a decoy in that situation, trying to get another guy open. And it just so happened that I popped open. And I don't know why Kirk was looking my way, but he did. And um, he threw a perfect ball. I just went up and got it. Uh, so it's kind of funny, you know, it's like, I'm the last, I'm not even a read on this last play and end up 
getting the ball thrown my way. That's why you always got to be ready. You never know. <laughs> I, I, I got to be honest, it gives me chills. Like, because yeah. it, it, it's, it's interesting because most people, you know, when they're, when they're watching a football game, they don't understand all the dynamics that go into it, right? Mm. <clears throat> and I always tell people, sports in general, if the more you understand about the specific sport, the more um, enjoyable it is, yeah. right? When you were talking about um, the the kick that uh, that 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 you muffed, um, mm -hmm. and and saying like I I had no idea because I didn't really play. I played a couple years when I was younger, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that that the kicker could make it harder to catch. I just because you watch it on TV. I'm I'm gonna be completely honest, and and I've talked about this a lot. Um, that professionals they make the sport look easy they they, yeah. they really do and that's that's why they're professionals right i mean uh -huh. you, you you see somebody in the half pipe who's ex really good at it and and you think to yourself oh i could do that until you <laughs> go and and you see an actual half pipe and you're like that is yeah. way bigger than i thought yeah. um but that's that's the same with you know uh fielding a a, a punt or a kick or whatever it's like it, it looks fairly straightforward. So when you said that, I, I I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, it's a different dynamic. You know, the ball, depending on how it's kicked, um, you try your best. I mean, that ball's way up in the air most of the time to look at the, the tip of the ball because that'll tell you kind of where it's going to come down mm. and how it's going to come down. Um, and the ball itself isn't very heavy, but when it's way up there and it's a good spiral, it comes down like a missile. So it's actually yeah. really, it feels heavy when, you, it, you know, you come down to catch it. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different details. Um, and like you said, a lot of people don't realize, but I don't really expect them to realize, you know, because I mean, unless you're, unless you do it, unless you play that position, you really aren't going to fully understand. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there's a huge difference. So if you played that position from high school to college, there's going to be a huge difference. And then from college to the NFL, right? Like that's yeah. an even, an even bigger jump. Yeah. I mean, each, each, yeah. I mean, you, I guess you could call them levels, right? And yeah. each one, I mean, it's different. 100%. It's different. Um, but you, you were talking about the half pipe and I can't imagine looking at a half pipe and even thinking about going down something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's crazy. <laughs> Have you, uh, do you ski or snowboard at all? I, I haven't, I've always wanted to, the reason I haven't is just to stay healthy, you know, for the just in case. Yeah. Um, I think when I'm done playing, I may try to pick something like that up, but uh, I mean, I'll probably end up being awful, <laughs> but the experience itself just seems so fun and cool. Well, if it works out, I'd love to take you to one of those events um, and, and, and check it out. It is, it is pretty amazing because yeah. you look on, on TV and, and it, it looks like it's flat. I mean, if you really thought about it, you'd know it can't be flat because how do they how do they get the speed down it? But the first time I actually went to an event, I mean, it's really steep. It's it, yeah. it's, it's crazy, and the walls are I think oh, I twenty two feet high. Are they and, really? Yeah. Wow. So when they pop out of the yeah, wall, yeah. they're getting like twenty some feet out of the wall. On top of that, so I mean, it's yeah, it's they're they're getting oh getting gosh. way up there, way up Great. there. Yeah, you don't realize that stuff watching on TV. No. You really don't. No, and everything I feel like looks slower on TV, right? Mm. It, it, if you're watching it as a spectator, so yeah. um, I would imagine it's a much faster game in real life. Like just the split decision you have to make, you know the. Yeah, I just I feel like playing it must be a lot faster than watching it, and it's a lot. It, it's so easy to sit down on the couch with a bucket of popcorn and chips, yeah. and right, and, and be like, "Oh man, I could have done that," <laughs> or you know, easy to pick out the faults. But I, I've been on the field, and also, um, I I watched part of a Canadian football league. Uh, uh, game from the end zone and okay. i didn't realize like looking at it that perspective when you're looking at it from above you can yeah. see everything right yeah. but when you're down low at the, the 
the field of vision is a lot smaller and it's it's hard to see over i mean some of those guys are huge yeah and especially the guys up front yeah, yeah they're huge. Those, that's why i try to run away from those guys <laughs> 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 at least yeah. that's the goal yeah yeah so, um <laughs> so is there one moment in your career that stands out more more than anything maybe it was um a moment you you learned something that uh that was like an aha moment or just an unbelievable feeling um yet you have yeah. a moment like that that sticks out you know um we've we have, we have, we've obviously already talked about it but the carolina game is yeah. a huge moment for sure um but the, the one that actually came to mind right away was when I first stepped on the field um, in a Vikings uniform um, and just running through the tunnel. It was, it was in a culmination of so many feelings, you know, because if I just was taking in all of the moments beforehand, right? Like even high school and, and yeah. college and um, the injuries, the overcoming, the trying to, you know, come back healthier and, and still compete and, uh, we didn't even get into how I actually made it into the NFL, you know, I mean, I was bottom of the barrel. I wasn't even, I wasn't drafted. I wasn't even signed as a free agent right away. I was what you call a mini camp invite where they just kind of invite you in and, and basically a tryout guy. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to earn um, a, uh, a, a contract. And, uh, you know, so the first time I stepped on the field it was just like, man, this is incredible. You know, I, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, just so many different thoughts um, and a culmination of so many different feelings. But uh, that's a moment I'll never forget. Yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine. I mean, if that's the, the goal, the step mm -hmm. out on the field that first time and just feel like, all right. I did it. Yeah. This everything was everything was worth it. All the the suffering, you know, the injuries, the the doubters. Yeah, makes yeah. it all feel. Yeah. Okay, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I definitely had a lot of doubters, <laughs> <laughs> but I had just enough people in my life that were huge encouragement, you know, and and just, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it, but just encouraging me, and that's all I needed, you know, the important people in my life to. Uh, see the good um that helps a ton and you bring up a great point because i don't think people when when they're trying to set themselves up for success i don't think they really put in the equation the support team because the yeah. support team is huge right huge mm -hmm. huge so, um and whether that's your parents, whether that's friends, um, whether that's your spouse, you know, I mean, it, it's all, it's huge. It really is. Um, and I th you hit it on the head too, is I don't think you really realize it until maybe a goal is accomplished and then you kind of look back and then you really do realize how much of a help, you know, those people in your life were. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's important to actually see that and then actually tell those people. Yeah. Um, yeah my opinion well you know for sure and you know i've i've heard this several different times um about you are the person that you surround yourself with right the, yeah. the people that you surround yourself with so i always tell people i've got the most incredible job because mm -hmm. the people i surround myself with are are, are guys like you um yeah. these olympic athletes you know people who have accomplished so much so i feel like my life's pretty awesome in that in that fact that I'm I'm learning every day from people and and, and talking to amazing people like yourself all the time, but uh, but again that I think that goes into the support group, right? Are you are you surrounding yourself with people who are telling you you can't do it? I mean, you're always gonna have people who who tell you you can't do it, but yep. if you got somebody in your inner circle saying that, that's I feel like when you've got to evaluate your your situation. Yep spot on inner circle um is the word right there um because that's most important uh because you like you said you're always going to have people on the outside you know hating on you or doubting you and uh i think that's just the world we live in yeah uh, but as long as you got the right people around you in your inner circle um it goes a long way 
uh, for sure. But I appreciate what you said. Um, and uh, I would agree. You do have a pretty sweet job. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. <laughs> I try not to let people um, see in too much because, you know, I, I don't want people trying to take my job from me. Right? <laughs> I love uh, it. Um, so I hear the little one in the background. I don't want to take too much of your time, um, oh, but good. two more questions. And uh, uh, so the first of the two, why USANA? What, uh, what, what made you decide to, to partner with USANA? Yeah, uh, you know, so even growing up, my, my dad was involved with USANA uh, for a while. And uh, so I was taking USANA supplements um, for a long time. I know I was heavy into them in high school and even into college. You know, I tried my best to stay on USANA. Um, but then kind of got away from, um, uh, and, but I'm, I, I was missing that cause I didn't have that extra supplementation cause you know, food and, and what I put in my body is huge. Yep. Um, it has to be, you know, especially at this level, there's just the, the little things set you apart, you know, and, um, and this is one of them. And, uh, what sets you sound apart in my mind is how clean it is and how professional, um, the organization is, you know, after doing research, uh, you try to be diligent in, uh, in those things. Um, it was very clear and evident that it was top of the line. Um, and, uh, it was something that I wanted to be a part of, you know, cause I, I know it was a part of my dad's life and I'm like, well, Hey, you know, this, it seems to just continue to get better, which is awesome yeah. to me, you know, more and more things are coming out and I I'm enjoying a lot of, all, of, of those things. And, uh, it's, it's just a company that I want to be a part of, I want to continue to be a part of. And, uh, I know it's helped me, you know, in my game. Um, and now going through an, an injury here and, and a surgery, I know it's only going to help, um, support the, the healing process and the journey back onto the field. Um, so it's kind of perfect timing, you know, I, I, I can't remember when I joined, it was, it's pretty recent ago though. I, what was it last summer or yeah. was it this? Yeah. I think, yeah. It's been about, it's been close to a year, but not quite a year. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so now, yeah, with this injury, uh, like I said, it's kind of perfect timing being able to have something like this to, uh, supplement along the way. Um, do, do you have a favorite product? I do. I really love Procosa, which I'm sure you've heard that before with some athletes. Uh, but for me specifically, I mean, I've had, <laughs> I've had two ankle surgeries, a knee surgery, you know, and a wrist surgery, finger, and yeah, knuckle replacement. So I, I have, I've had joint issues, you know, and yeah. so Procosa has just been huge for me. So I, I kind of pound that supplement <laughs> and I know it helped, uh, especially with this one. And I think, I mean, again, Right. I'm not going to just claim that you sign yeah. it just heals yeah. you because, uh, but it, it helps. There's no doubt about it. And I know it, I, for me, I really do feel like it's helped speed up the process. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that, but, uh, yeah, and I really love to, um, rev. Um, and I take the easy way out and I just get it by the can, <laughs> <laughs> but I love to take that as kind of a pre-workout. Um, but not only that, I just enjoy the taste. So I'll just drink it for fun yeah. to be honest with you. Uh, and then this is kind of a weird thing, but I actually, I don't remember when the joggers came out and this isn't a product necessarily that you yeah. obviously eat, but the joggers are super soft and stretchy. I love those things. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I love those things. I'm, I'm so, going to let them know because, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I know the, the gal that, that creates all that stuff really well. And so when she hears stuff like that, it just makes her day. So yeah, you should tell her uh, she did a good job on those. That's for sure. That's so. awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last question. Yeah. And this is a question I like to, to end on um, every time I do one of these interviews. Uh, what is one thing that you do every day? Uh, it could be something small, big, but uh, something that's, that's, people who are watching that they can implement in their life to help as well? Is there, is there one thing that you do that you feel like, um, elevates you? Yeah. Um, hmm. 
I think for me, it's, it's taking a step back and taking quiet time. You know, some people maybe call it meditation or whatnot, which I think in all, in the sense of it, it's all good. Uh, but for me, it's just, I call it just quiet time um, and reflecting. And it doesn't have to be for 15 minutes. It could just be for like a few minutes, you know, but just like taking a deep breath and like, just don't let the day get so busy where it, it's just like, I don't want to be a, a person to sit down at the end of the day or lay my head down at the pillow. And I'm like, what happened today? Yeah. You know, like I, I want to try to be as much just, um, how do I explain it? Um, Reflective is a great word. Yeah. You know, just not trying to let the day get away from me, yeah. basically. Um, trying to be in the moment. Uh, and uh, yeah. But no, just reflective. Um, for me, I like to sometimes be in prayer or read something. But uh, at the end of the day, just taking a moment to just take a deep breath and, yeah. you know, reflect on the day. Awesome. Ca capture your thoughts. Yeah. All right. I know I said that was the last question, but this is an easy question. The picture mm -hmm. behind you, it, was that oh, during the Carolina game? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it's funny. I, can I actually pick up my computer and show you? Yes, absolutely. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that the words at all? Mm, I can't really make it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was, so it was week 12, which is my number, which is kind of funny. And then it was also the same day that we found out we were pregnant which was really cool. So my wife actually FaceTimed me the morning of the game. It was like, Hey, you know, we're having a baby. Wow. <laughs> we had been trying for really only a month. And, uh, so it, it kind of came by surprise, but at the same time, not really, you yeah. know, cause we were trying, yeah. but, um, so that day was probably the most emotional day I've ever had in my life. Holy cow. <laughs> Finding out pregnant to the type of game that I was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's why my parents actually did that for me, surprised me for Christmas. That's I just, really I had cool. kept the jersey, you know, and and wrote all that stuff out because it's just something to remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that is the game. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That that that's a really cool picture. Really yeah, cool thanks. picture. Well, Chad, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, love talking with you. You're an amazing person. And I've, I've heard you are a beloved player in the NFL just because you are one of the nicest people on the planet. So thanks. Um, thanks. Thanks for taking the time out. And, you know, thanks for being a part of USANA. We love we love having having people like you represent represent who we are. So appreciate that. Yeah, well, you said a lot of nice things. I really appreciate it, too. And I always enjoy talking with you, Jason, truthfully. Um, so, and love being a part of the USANA team. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, man. Appreciate it. You too. See you. you too.